Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. You'll notice I've got a special guest with me. Jaren, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Jaren. I used to be a subscriber just like you guys, and now I'm here as a Master Rings craftsman for Patrick. Yeah, it's awesome. Today, we're doing something really special. We're making Jaren a custom wedding ring. We've kind of come full circle with everything. It's going to include a forged carbon fiber liner, meteorite edges, white gold accents, and then a custom glowstone inlay that's gonna have blue glow, obsidian pigment, a meteorite shavings, lapis lazuli, as well as diamond dust. I think it's gonna be really special. Jaren, can you walk us through some of these materials? Why do these have meaning to you? Yeah, um, so the meteorite, um, I love space. I'm a little bit of a space nerd. Yeah, you and me both. Yeah, and then we got the diamonds. Of course, diamonds are forever. Yeah, and we'll then, sprinkle some of those in. Yeah, and then lapis. Um, lapis represents wisdom, and I think I'm a pretty smart guy, Jared's so I throw smart that in. Dude, yeah. yeah, and also gives a really good deep blue color. And then also the white gold will match my wife's wedding ring, so that'll be really special as well. Well, that is an overview of the ring. Should we go ahead and get started? Yeah, let's do it. All right, the first material we're gonna go ahead and start working on is the forged carbon fiber. And what's so nice about forged carbon fiber is you can work with it on a lathe. And that's because it's got three axis dimensional stability. Um, pretty much long story short, regular carbon fiber, you stack it up in layers and it's very strong, but it can separate. And when you're machining it on like a lathe like this, it just really doesn't work and you're gonna get delamination. Forged carbon fiber doesn't have that problem and it looks amazing. So it's awesome material. Thank you to Carbon6 Ring for supplying it to us. Once we've got the ring blank cut to size, we need to go ahead and separate it from the rest of the piece. So to do that, I'm going to use a diamond cutoff wheel. This will leave us with really nice unfrayed edges. Now after some quick sanding, we're left with a liner that's ready to go. Now let's go ahead and move on to the meteorite. So first we selected the blank that we want for Jaren's ring and then we'll use this hydraulic press to go ahead and remove it from the rest of the material. If you didn't know, this meteorite is 4.6 billion years old. That's older than the Earth itself. The meteorite we use is called Muaniana Lusta. It exploded into millions and millions of pieces in our atmosphere and scattered all over northern Scandinavia. Now using a boring bar, I'm going to go ahead and widen out the inside diameter. We'll get that right to the size that we want. You'll notice while I'm at it, I'm also truing up that outside edge. Now it's time to use one of our Patrick Adair Supplies ring mandrels and we'll worry about the outside diameter. We're gonna be using a very similar lathe tool. It also has a tungsten carbide bit on the end of it that's replaceable. We'll go ahead and just trim down that outer diameter until it's right to size. Now I need to separate the pieces off and I can't use a diamond cutter like I did for the carbon fiber because that just wouldn't work. The diamond would overheat and then it, the tool would destroy itself. So for this, I'm going to have to use aluminum oxide cutoff wheels. Um, the only problem with these is they don't last very long. They sand away as you use them. So it's quite a slow and tedious process, but the results are worth it. I'm gonna go ahead and just take my time and we'll cut right through them. You'll notice I'm using plenty of coolant. This process generates a lot of heat, so I use a lot of the coolant just to keep everything nice and cool.
All right, at this stage we have all of the pieces ready to go ahead and assemble, so I'll go ahead and start doing that. For this I'm using AstroTech Cyanoacrylate Adhesive. I'm using medium viscosity because it's thick enough that it'll actually stay in place how I want it. Now from here it's pretty simple, I just go ahead and stack the components up in the order that I want them. But you'll notice I put a piece of carbon fiber in between the two pieces of white gold. That's not the design we want to do, you'll see what we're doing with that later. For now it's just a sacrificial piece of carbon fiber that we use to make sure that everything's really concentric and that the ring lines up perfectly. Now after allowing that to cure, we're going to go ahead and remove that sacrificial piece of carbon fiber. For that I'm just going to be using a cutoff bit and I'll slowly and carefully do that. Now once we finished this step, Jaron and I were looking at the ring and we decided that we wanted the white gold accents to be slightly thinner. That has two benefits, it changes the overall look of the ring to be a little bit more streamlined, then it also widens up that inside channel, it gives us a little bit more room for the inlay that I'm going to have Jaron do. So this step was not easy at all, I had to be very very careful and I had to use a very sharp lathe cutter. My goal is to take these white gold accents down from being one millimeter wide to just a half a millimeter wide. And when they get this thin, if they're uneven it really shows, so I had to take my time and be very careful about getting it just right. And here you can see we're good to go, we're ready to move on to the inlaying steps. And for this step, I wanted to have Jaron do it. He specializes in these types of inlays. He's a master glowstone craftsman. And I think it's so cool that he is able to take part in making his own wedding ring. So first, it's a little bit of material prep. These aren't all just ready to go, ready to inlay, especially for this inlay that's so specific. It's a pretty narrow channel. So a lot of the pieces we use, we want to crush down just a little bit extra. That way we can fit them all within the inlay. Now we've got all the materials ready, Jaren's going to go ahead and just carefully place them inside that channel using cyanoacrylate adhesive throughout the whole process. And he's just slowly building it up, he's being very careful about his material placement. He's cherry picking all the materials, he's picking the bluest of blue lapis lazuli pieces, trying to make this ring as close to perfect as possible. There is actually quite a bit that goes into the placement of all the materials in the ring. If you clump materials too close together, you'll get really unnatural looking inlays. And if you do them too far apart, the same exact problem rises up. There's a lot of little issues like that that you really got to be aware of and you really just have to have a lot of experience. So it was really nice having Jaron do this step because he was able to just do it perfect. All right, Jaren's got that inlay finished up. We're ready to hand it off back over to me. We're gonna go ahead and sand it back down flush and work on this finish. Now because some of these materials are a bit harder than normal, I'm going to be using this carbide lathe burr. These are very nice because the material, the tungsten carbide it's made out of is so hard that it's able to just tear right through any of those harder materials like that lapis and then some of the diamonds that we sprinkled in there. And then on top of that, it's extremely durable. If I'm careful, I can use it for 10, 20, even 30 rings and it'll still be going strong. Now that we've got that flush, it's time to do one last dimension check to make sure that we've got everything exactly how we want it. And then I'll hone in some final details starting with the bevels. Typically for cutting bevels, you'd want to use a lathe bit, but for meteorite, it can be quite a temperamental material. You really don't want to risk anything bad happening to it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this by hand. You have to be extremely careful in how you do it in order to get really nice even bevels. All right, we're getting really, really close. We just got two more steps. We got to do sanding and polishing on the ring, and then we got to go through the etching process for the meteorite. 
The sanding is very straightforward. I start off with a 220 grit sandpaper and work my way up through progressively finer sandpapers all the way up to about 1500 and then I finish it off with our AstroTech all-in-one polish. I repeat these steps for both the outside and the inside of the ring. The etching process begins with an acid bath. We'll go ahead and place the ring in that. And you'll notice we've carefully taped off the inlay. That'll prevent the acid from destroying any of those inlay ingredients. After the acid etching, we're going to dunk the ring in a couple of other solutions. First, we want to neutralize all of that acid, then we want to darken the metal, and then we want to give it some oxidation resistance. So we'll go through all those different chemical treatments, and then as a finishing step, I spray it with some gun oil, and then buff the entire surface of the ring with some steel wool, and it leaves us with the final finish that we want. Now with that, the ring is finished. All right, well, the ring is finished. Jaren, what do you think? It looks so good. Are you happy with how it turned out? I love it. I love every detail of it. Awesome. The meteorite, white gold, all of it. Yeah, I think everything came together just honestly perfectly for this. I love the inlay. I think it looks even better than the prototype that you did. I think just something about the metals. We've got multiple metals going on. It's just it's a very classy ring. And I love the metallic uh, shavings that are in there, the meteorite shavings. And you put the white gold shavings in there, right? Yep. So uh, just overall, such a cool look. Everything ties in together. Love it. All right, well, that's going to be it for this video. We're not going to have this available for sale on the website, obviously, because it was so customized. Um, but if you guys want something custom, we're always happy to do it. So reach out through email. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Jaren, thank you so much for working with me thank on you. this. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. See ya.